Welcome to Cancer Treatment Updates, where treatment options for cancer are discussed openly and demystified. Today I'll be discussing the management of HER2-positive early-stage breast cancer. I will present a case to start with, a patient I saw recently in my clinic. The patient was a 56-year-old female who presented with a left breast mass, mammogram ultrasound, an MRI showed a suspicious mass on the left breast, we did a biopsy that showed an invasive ductal carcinoma, ER negative, progesterone receptor negative, and HER2 positive. The tumor was grade 3, poorly differentiated. A lymph node was enlarged based on physical exam and MRI. Biopsy showed invasive cancer cells in the lymph node, and there was no evidence of disease elsewhere. This is what we would consider early stage breast cancer. Now we needed to decide what to do next. Should the patient go to surgery? Should the patient get neoadjuvant or preoperative therapy? And that would be the topic today. My recommendation in consultation with our surgeons and our multidisciplinary team was to proceed with neoadjuvant, also called preoperative systemic therapy, which is chemotherapy and biologic therapy we would give before the patient goes to surgery. There are different types of chemotherapy we would consider. The most important ones are the taxanes, whether it's paclitaxel or docetaxel, as well as carboplatin. In terms of biologic therapy or targeted therapy, we would use two monoclonal antibodies, trastuzumab, also known as Herceptin, and pertuzumab, also known as Pergeta. For this particular patient, our recommendation was to um, treat the patient with weekly paclitaxel in combination with weekly carboplatin for 12 weeks in combination with both antibodies, trastuzumab and pertuzumab, which could be given intravenously or subcutaneously, and we chose to do it in a subcutaneous form called FESGO. At that point, we would repeat the MRI, and if the patient is responding, we would consider taking this patient to surgery and then decide what to do postoperatively instead of systemic therapy to address every possible microscopic metastasis. If we start with this type of therapy we call TCHP, taxane, carboplatin, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab, when we do surgery, whether it's a lumpectomy or a lumpectomy, depending on the pathological response, we would decide on different treatment options. If there is no cancer in the breast or the lymph nodes under the arm, that is a pathologic complete response. The patient would continue with the monoclonal antibodies, trastuzumab and pertuzumab, subcutaneously, they can also be given intravenously, every three weeks to complete one year. So if the patient has received three or four months of chemotherapy and antibody therapy before surgery, then they would complete the remaining time after surgery. On the other hand, if there is residual disease, we would use a different treatment called trastuzumab DM1 or Catsilo to complete one year of therapy. If we look at the history of uh, her to targeted therapies, the first one that was developed was trastuzumab, also known as Herceptin, which was approved by the FDA in 1998. All the treatments for this type of breast cancer that have been approved since 1998 until uh, today, it's been a significant number of therapies. The second one that was approved for patients with early stage in the neoadjuvant or preoperative setting was pertuzumab in combination with trastuzumab. That was approved in 2012, and that is the treatment we recommended for our patient today. Trastuzumab DM1 or Catsila was approved later for patients who had residual disease. There are many other HER2 therapies that are approved in patients with metastatic breast cancer and are now being tested in patients with early stage breast cancer, such as trastuzumab, delustican, marbetuximab, and others that we are not going to be discussing today. In the adjuvant setting, after we complete the one year of therapy, in some cases we can also use another therapy called neratinib but that is beyond the topic of today's presentation. One of the most important aspects of this approach is the assessment of pathologic response after 
neoadjuvant or preoperative, chemotherapy and monoclonal antibody therapy. Clinical trials looking back decades, we've seen reported that patients who achieved a pathologic complete response, if they had HER2 positive disease, that pathologic complete response correlates with improved survival. So it is the most important prognostic factor, in my opinion, by giving chemotherapy and monoclonal antibody therapy for a few months before surgery. The results we get at the time of surgery, if the patient achieves pathologic complete response, then their prognosis is quite good. And that happens in approximately 50 to 60, sometimes 70 percent of cases, depending on the, the other uh, patient factors and tumor factors, such as estrogen receptor uh, status, clinical stage, etc. In HER2 positive disease, the first uh, set of clinical trials evaluated the role of trastuzumab added to chemotherapy. There were a number of studies, uh, several institutions and international studies that showed by adding trastuzumab to chemotherapy it would improve the pathologic complete response, PCR, which is the main endpoint for these trials. The pivotal studies adding pertuzumab, the second antibody, were the Neosphere trial and Trifina trial. Those are two important trials that looked at the combination of trastuzumab and pertuzumab in addition to chemotherapy. The Neosphere trial looked at a taxane, docetaxel, in combination with pertuzumab and trastuzumab before surgery, and then after surgery, patients received additional chemotherapy. The Trifina study looked at a similar combination, but also at another combination called TCHP, which incorporates trastuzumab, pertuzumab, ataxane, and carboplatin. And in that study, there was a significant pathologic complete response rate with the TCHP without any additional chemotherapy, for example, anthracyclines. Now, the important difference between these trials is that the Neosphere, the one that used THP, taxane, trastuzumab, pertuzumab, without carboplatin, was the main study looking at PCR as the primary endpoint. The other one, the Trifina, was mostly designed to look at cardiac safety, cardiology, cardiac toxicity. We chose that the combination is safe, whether we use it with carboplatin, with the taxane, even if we add an anthracycline, it would be safe. But combining both, since both studies looked at pathologic complete response, the FDA approved it for this indication since it improved the pathologic complete response rate compared to chemotherapy and trastuzumab alone. So chemotherapy like a taxane with or without carboplatin plus trastuzumab and pertuzumab improved the pathologic complete response rate and that is why this became standard of care. As we can see in this slide, patients who received Docetaxel, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab, so-called THP preoperatively, had the highest pathologic complete response compared to the other subgroups, which included chemotherapy with trastuzumab, without pertuzumab, or even the two antibodies alone without chemotherapy. In the Trifina study, patients were randomized to three different groups. One group of patients received anthracycline therapy, fluorouracil, epirubicin, and cyclophosphamide in combination with trastuzumab and pertuzumab. Another group of patients received the anthracycline in se sequence with taxane, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab, but both groups had anthracycline therapy, which may increase the risk of heart failure. And the third group was treated with TCHP, docetaxel, carboplatin, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab, without an anthracycline and in that group, the pathologic complete response was, was quite high, especially in patients with estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor and negative tumors. So this is, this is the most uh, commonly used therapy, the TCHP nowadays in patients with early stage breast cancer. There is a lot of interest in developing de-escalation protocols to use less chemotherapy in addition to this antibody therapy, because the most important part of the, th the treatment of patients with HER2 positive early stage breast cancer is the HER2 targeted therapies, meaning the monoclonal antibodies, trastuzumab and pertuzumab. And the chemotherapy backbone is a little bit less important, in my opinion, whether you use docetaxel or paclitaxel, two different taxanes. 
I don't think it makes a difference. Whether you use carboplatin or not, it seems to improve the pathologic complete response. We don't know long term if that makes a big impact or not, because again, after surgery, patients would receive additional treatments. Just comparing the taxane chemotherapy, which is the most important component of the chemotherapy backbone in this type of treatment. There are studies looking at weekly paclitaxel, which is, in my opinion, less toxic than, than the docetaxel given every three weeks in combination with weekly carboplatin or even without carboplatin that are showing very good results. For example, in, in one study uh, completed at uh, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston, they treated patients with THP, weekly paclitaxel, trastuzumab before surgery. If patients didn't respond well, they could be treated with an anthracycline and cytoxin chemotherapy, but most patients didn't. Most patients received the THP, the weekly paclitaxel, trastuzumab and trastuzumab, then went to surgery, and the pathologic complete response rate was approximately 60%, so very acceptable in a de-escalation type of approach. After surgery, patients could receive trastuzumab DM1, Katsala, as we'll see in a minute, in patients who had not achieved a pathologic complete response. Another aspect of these treatments is how we deliver these drugs. Again, we talked about the taxanes, which could be docetaxel every three weeks or paclitaxel once a week. I personally prefer the paclitaxel once a week based on clinical trials I showed you and many more in other settings where weekly paclitaxel seems to be as effective as docetaxel every three weeks, so that's my preference. I prefer the weekly therapy. In terms of the monoclonal antibodies, which are given every three weeks, we have two options. The way they were approved initially, trastuzumab and pertuzumab, were given intravenously. Now we have a new formulation called FESGO that includes both antibodies in a subcutaneous formulation that is given in the leg in a few minutes as opposed to a 30 minutes infusion. And I prefer that as well. In one study, this was compared to the subcutaneous formulation was compared to the intravenous formulation and the pharmacokinetics, the way it works seems to be the same and the efficacy was the same in patients who received neoadjuvant or preoperative trastuzumab and pertuzumab. In another study, these patients were randomized to IV antibody therapy versus subcutaneous antibody therapy preoperatively. And then after surgery, they were offered, which one would you prefer to continue for the next nine months, let's say, to complete one year? Most patients chose the subcutaneous formulation. So the subcutaneous formulation is my preference in patients who receive neoadjuvant HER2 therapy. In an effort to de-escalate therapy in HER2 positive early stage breast cancer, a study published presented in 2023 called the FERGAIN trial, patients with early stage breast cancer, HER2 positive were treated initially with TCHP, docetaxel, carboplatin, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab. After two cycles, they had a PET scan, and if the PET scan shows a favorable response, then the patients would continue treatment with HP alone, trastuzumab and pertuzumab without chemotherapy. And then at the time of surgery, if the patients had a pathologic complete response, they would continue with trastuzumab and pertuzumab. If patients did not respond well to the PET scan, of course, they would continue neoadjuvant chemotherapy and trastuzumab and pertuzumab and then would be treated postoperatively as per standard of care. Some patients also received antibody therapy with endocrine therapy, and again, if they had a good response by PET, they would continue with the endocrine therapy and monoclonal antibody therapy alone without chemotherapy. So at the end of this trial, there was a number of patients who received no chemotherapy, uh, which either received a small two cycles of chemotherapy or no chemotherapy to start with, and then were treated with biologic targeted therapy all the way along. But when we look at the whole uh, trial results, the disease-free survival for these patients was, was excellent. Uh, the majority of patients had no uh, recurrence at three years. So this is a still an investigational uh, approach, but it's something that is being explored in other 
uh, clinical trials. Here we summarize what would be considered the standard treatment on top in blue, where you see the chemotherapy, taxane, with or without carboplatin, most of the times we would give uh, a taxane with carboplatin, trastuzumab and pertuzumab, patients go to surgery. After that, if they achieve pathology complete response, they would continue with the monoclonal antibodies alone. If they do not achieve pathologic complete response, then they would receive as a standard of care TDM1 or trastuzumab TM1, also known as Cancilla, and uh, there are clinical trials also looking at new therapies such as, such as tucatinib, trastuzumab deruxtecan, and, and other therapies in this setting. In an effort to de-escalate <clears throat> the use of chemotherapy in these patients, meaning using less chemotherapy and more biologic targeted therapy, there are several trials that are ongoing. One is the Fergain study I mentioned, that is an approach using PET scan to assess molecular response by imaging and then guide the therapy based on that. There are other studies such as the ADAPT trials in Germany that are looking at using less chemotherapy like the THP or even hormone therapy and then uh, targeted therapy without chemotherapy. And there are other trials in the US as well looking at the escalation before surgery and after surgery. Uh, for example, the COMPASS HER2 trial that is looking at using trastuzumab and uh, tucatinib in patients with residual disease or in patients who achieve pathologic response just to continue the antibody therapies. And we are doing clinical trials looking at additional therapies to improve the outcomes of these patients. For example, looking at trastuzumab deruxtecan, which is uh, HER2. In summary, the prognosis of HER2 positive breast cancer is excellent. Most patients are actually cured using this approach. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode of Cancer Free.